Machinists are constantly required to cut grooves or shapes into cylindrical workpieces. This operation is called grooving or necking. It requires grinding a tool which will machine its shape directly into the workpiece. These tools are called forming tools. After viewing this videotape, you will be able to write down the safety precautions for grinding of forming tools and machining grooves or shapes, describe the procedures for grinding forming tools, and describe the procedures for machining grooves and shapes on a cylinder using forming tools. To protect yourself, the people around you, and your equipment, you must follow these procedures. Always wear safety glasses. Remove rings and watches. Keep your sleeves above the elbows. Check your lathe setup for rigidity, which includes tool overhang for a solid setup. And always reduce the spindle speeds when forming or using tools which contact the work over a large surface area. Forming tools are normally used to cut shapes such as a square groove, round groove, V groove, and a radius on corners. Grooves may allow space for tool runout during subsequent operations. Grooves may also provide clearance in the assembly of parts. Radii improve the appearance of parts, remove sharp edges, and provide clearance for the assembly of parts. A convex radius on shoulders removes corner stress for heat treating. Square grooves are usually cut in a workpiece to give tool runout, for example, at the end of a threading operation. These grooves are machined with a forming tool ground to the width of the groove or slightly narrower than the groove. For this demonstration, we will cut a groove 3 16 of an inch wide and 1 8 of an inch deep. Begin with a 5 16 inch tool blank and grind the end relief angle. Since this tool will be held in a straight tool holder, the angle of the holder must be added to the end relief. To get an end relief of 8 to 10 degrees on a tool held in a tool holder at 14 and a half degrees, Grind an angle of 22 and a half to 24 and a half degrees on the end of the tool bit. Hold the tool bit to the wheel slightly above the center of the wheel and grind the end relief. The bit must be 3 16th of an inch wide for cutting a 3 16th of an inch groove. The groove will be 1 8 inch deep, so the side relief must extend more than 1 8 inch back into the body of the tool bit to allow the cutting surface to go to the full depth of the groove. Side relief of four to six degrees is sufficient because you want a solid blocky tool to dissipate heat during the cutting operations. Begin on one side, hold the tool bit to the wheel and grind four to six degrees of side relief on the side of the tool, extending the grinding back three sixteenth of an inch to one quarter of an inch. As you grind the side relief, you should also grind two to four degrees of clearance from the point of the bit into the body. This small angle will give clearance when the tool is fed into the work. Now perform the same procedure on the opposite side, grinding the tool to the specified width of three sixteenth of an inch. If you are grinding tools for a production operation, the dimension should be precise. If not, Grind slightly under size. You can check the tool bit with a micrometer. Be careful not to screw it too tightly onto the tool. Just a light feel is all that is necessary. This bit is 12 thousandths under size. Now grind the rake angle in the top of the bit. Tools for cutting straight into the work require zero to two degrees back rake for cutting steel. For aluminum and other soft metals, use a larger back rake. Hold the top of the bit to the wheel and grind approximately two degrees of back rake. The tool is now complete and you are ready to use it for cutting a square groove in a cylindrical workpiece. Mount the work in the lathe. 
holding it between centers or in a three-jaw chuck. For this demonstration, we will use a three-jaw chuck. Turn the compound rest parallel to the ways of the machine and mount a straight tool holder in the tool post. Place the bit into the tool holder and align the end of the tool on the center of the work by using a scale or straight piece of metal. Move the tool up and down until the scale is straight up and down vertically. Now check to see that the center axis of the tool is perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. This step ensures that the tool will feed straight without rubbing on the sides where clearance angles have been ground. Select the proper spindle speed for the type of metal you are machining and the type of bit you are using. A reduced spindle speed should be used because of the large amount of tool surface in contact with the work. Engage the clutch. Blue the workpiece and lay out the location of the groove from the end of the workpiece. In this case, one inch from the end. Set your calipers and mark one inch. Then, since the groove is to be three sixteenths of an inch wide, mark a line at one and three sixteenths of an inch. Now you are ready to machine the groove. Remove the backlash from the compound in the direction of the headstock. Bring the tool into the work with a cross feed and the carriage, lining up the edge of the tool on the one inch line. Set the cross feed dial at zero. And set the compound dial at zero. Since the tool is slightly undersize, it will not cut the full width of the groove. The compound will be used to cut the remaining amount. Lock the carriage to prevent it from moving on the waves. Now feed the tool in to a depth of one hundred thousandths. Back the tool out and move the tool 12 thousandths with the compound to compensate for the undersized tool bit. Feed the cross feed in 100 thousandths so that the depth of cut matches that of the other one. Back out the cross feed and go back to the original setting of the compound. The compound dial is turned past the zero to remove the backlash. Then turn back to the original reading of zero. Now feed the cross feed in to the specified depth of 125 thousandths or one eighth inch. Then use the compound to slowly feed over 12 thousandths to remove the material in the bottom of the groove. Back the cross feed out slowly to put a square shoulder in the bottom of the groove and the groove is complete. Check the groove with a universal or dial caliper. The groove begins one inch in from the end and is three sixteenths of an inch wide. The diameter at the bottom of the groove is two hundred fifty thousandths less than the outside diameter of the work, which means that the groove is one hundred twenty five thousandths deep as specified. Another groove that is useful to the machinist is the round or concave groove, which requires grinding a convex forming tool. We will grind a 5 32nd of an inch radius on a 5 16th of an inch tool bit for this demonstration, and we'll make the groove 3 16th of an inch wide. Again, grind the end clearance first, allowing for the 14 and a half degree angle of the tool holder, plus the 8 to 10 degree clearance angle. If you are using a quick change tool post, then you would not add the 14 and a half degree angle to the regular clearance angle of 8 to 10 degrees. Hold the bit at the proper angle and grind in a circular motion. After grinding this surface about halfway up on the end of the bit, check the tip with a radius gauge. Also check the end relief angle. 
adjust the grinding motion as indicated by the gauge. Be careful to grind the radius square to the end of the tool or it will be hard to set up properly for machining. When the radius and end relief are properly ground, grind approximately two degrees of back rake into the top of the bit to complete it. The groove will be located one half inch in from the end of the workpiece. Since the groove will be three sixteenth of an inch wide, lay off a line one half inch from the end and another eleven sixteenth inch from the end. There is no depth specification because the radius of a tool will determine the depth when the proper width is reached. The compound can be set at 30 degrees or parallel to the ways for this operation. We will use it parallel. Engage the clutch and move the bit into position with the cross feed and carriage. Using the carriage, move the tool slightly back and forth and feed the tool in with the cross feed until it touches both layout lines. If you get chatter, reduce the spindle speed and increase the feed. When you have reached both lines, the groove is at the proper depth and width for a 5 32nd of an inch radius. This method can be used to cut any concave groove when the radius and the width of the groove are known. It can also be used if you know the radius and the specified depth of the groove. Another commonly machined radius is a convex radius caught on a corner with a concave forming tool. To grind this tool, you grind the end relief of 8 to 10 degrees and the radius at the same time by using the corner of the grinding wheel. We will use a 5 32nd of an inch radius in this demonstration. Shape the concave surface of the bits until it matches a 5 32nd of an inch radius gauge. Check the radius occasionally with a gauge while grinding. Turn the tool bit to the top of the wheel and grind the back rake. This tool bit can use a combination of a slight back rake and side rake away from the radius since the radius will be cutting in two directions on the corner of the work. The bit can be tilted slightly on the grinding wheel to give back rake and side rake. Using the same workpiece as before, cut a 5 32nd of an inch radius on the corner. Mark the end of the workpiece with a pair of calipers 5 32nd of an inch down on the end and 5 32nd of an inch along the diameter. Set up the tool bit in a straight tool holder at center height. Engage the clutch using the same reduced speed that was used to cut the other grooves. Using the cross feed and carriage, bring the tool bit into contact with the edge of the workpiece. Moving the carriage and cross feed back and forth, machine the corner edge of the workpiece until the tool touches both the line on the cylindrical surface and the line on the end of the workpiece. When the tool touches both lines, the radius is finished. This radius could be used to improve the appearance of a workpiece, to relieve corner stresses in heat treating, to prevent chipping, or to make it easier to assemble parts. Another groove that may be machined into a workpiece is a V-groove. For this demonstration, we will use a 34 degree included angle and will machine it to a width of 3 8 of an inch and a depth of 3 16th of an inch. First, you must grind the side angles on the tool bit. The sides of the groove will form a 34 degree included angle. So half of the included angle would be 17 degrees. Grind the side clearance angle at the same time you grind a 17 degree angle on the tool bit. Hold the tool bit parallel to the wheel. Then move the bit so that 17 degrees is ground off the side. Be sure to grind the side clearance angle at the same time. Grind these angles on the tool bit, making sure the cutting edge extends back along the tool bit farther than the depth of the groove 
in this case, 3 16th of an inch. We will grind the cutting edge approximately one quarter of an inch back. Check the angle periodically to make sure that you are maintaining the 17 degree angle. When you have one side finished, turn the tool bit and grind the opposite side. Also at 17 degrees with the same clearance angle. When you have the two 17 degree angles ground one quarter inch back on the sides of the tool bit, then set your protractor and check to make sure that you have the 34 degree included angle. Now grind the end clearance angle on the tool bit. Check for 8 to 10 degrees. Then grind approximately 2 degrees back rake because you will be cutting with both sides of the tool. Again, check the angle. This tool bit is now ready to cut the V groove. Mount your workpiece in a three jaw chuck or other holding device on the lathe. Again, use a slower spindle RPM than for roughing or finishing, since we will have a considerable amount of tool bit in contact with the work. Lay off the groove to be machined. This groove will be one half inch in from the end of the work and the groove will be 3 8 of an inch wide. Lay off another line 7 8 of an inch from the end. Set the compound rest parallel to the ways. Mount the tool holder and tool bit into the tool post with the tool bit set at center height. Engage the clutch and bring the tool bit into contact with the work using the carriage and cross feed. Set the cross feed to zero. Move the cross feed by hand. Then slowly move the cross feed into the workpiece. The depth of the groove is to be 187 thousandths. Take a depth of cut of 60 thousandths and rough machine the groove. Continue taking cuts until you reach a depth of 160 thousandths. Move slightly away from the line and using the cross feed, feed in the remaining 27 thousandths of an inch to the bottom of the groove. Then bring the tool bit slowly back with a carriage until the tool touches the edge of the line on the tailstock side. You now have the tailstock side of the groove finished. Slowly move the carriage toward the headstock removing the 27 thousandths in the bottom of the groove until the tool bit touches the line on the headstock side of the groove. At this point, back the cross feed out. You now have a finished V groove with an included angle of 34 degrees, 3 8 inch wide and 3 16 inch deep. To review, you have seen the safety procedures that are required in grinding forming tools and machining grooves or shapes. The procedures for grinding forming tools. And the procedures for machining grooves or shapes on a cylinder using forming tools. The grinding and use of forming tools will enable you to combine the cutting of grooves and radii with other operations to efficiently produce parts in the machine shop.